All right. So I uh, had to rush a couple of videos. My phone was being all, there's not enough data on here to record more stuff. So I got first two parts. It was supposed to be one part of uh, the new little Nishiki Mixty videos up last night. So I can make room for this video today. Normally it's Sunday, normally I'd be going to Sunday salvage sales trying to get good scores, but they didn't have them this week because of the swap meet. So there's a great big swap meet at Ranch Pizza on um, Ballard Brewery. It's one of my favorites. The kid who manages the place is a really cool bike kid. He's been in some of my videos. We re added some threads to an old mountain bike fork for him in a video. Um, he was there, I got one thing from him. Got some other things, went to the swap meet. It gets a little smaller and the deals get a little less good each time. Maybe people are just, the first one was so good because maybe nothing happened for a few years because of COVID. But it's still great and it's still fun. And so I got some scores in the swap meet. After that, I went to my friend uh, Brian's Stoic Wheels. I picked up a wheel set he built for me like months ago. I need to pick up. He moved into some new digs. It was really cool. I'll tell you about it. But of course, I get busy and confused and I don't take any actual video of anything fun I actually go do. I just gonna talk about it here in my bedroom later. And I did uh, at Tomcat pick up a bike. I sort of covered it a little bit in the last video on the Nishiki, but I'll cover a little bit more on the end of this one. Um, but yeah, let's let's check it out. So I got these two bags with some stuff. Um, I found one guy that I'd never met before and I bought a lot of stuff from him at the end. One of the first things I got, I got this crank set. It's the Sagino Black 165 um, Road Double, but it's got Sagino 46 tooth, like 130 VCD track ring. So it's like a messenger ring, but it doesn't say messenger, it's track. It's got cool Sagino chain ring bolts. It had 20 bucks on it. Some other guy was trying to lowball him some stuff. It was like 10 bucks. And I was like, I'll take it for 10 bucks and grabbed it. So nice. I can use these as a little Road Double on a shorty bike or use them as a single speed. I'll probably sell this ring for more than 10 bucks. So that was exciting. I think this was the first thing right when I first walked up. I parked a block away and I was all confused and thought I was in the wrong spot. And it was a little weird when I got there. And I got there and I got there two minutes after it started, but I felt like it had been going for an hour. I was like, oh, I'm so far behind. I was just in a weird, weird place. I walked around, you know, I bought some stuff. This one guy's booth was cool. I went to him three different times and bought stuff. He had the Z chain I wanted. It was on the top and he was making deals. I got 10 bucks on it, which is fine. I hate the world. This is ridiculous. This Z chain has a price tag on the back, so it's $47. These are like six bucks wholesale. I retail them for like 12, $47. There's a reason my bike shops are having problems. The world's out of control. I got 10 bucks on it. I picked up this random Soma bar tape. I'm like, would you do 10 for both? And he's like, yeah, totally. I'm like, cool. Um, I love Z51 chains or six seven eight speed chains are really you know non-index non oh this one has the little the little ramps in it so you can do index so this is really for like a six speed index is what it'd be best for i love them i use them for everything i use them for single speeds I use them for lots of junk oh the guy from i got this from him later too ah, i think i think after that i got this from him oh that's funny i bought these and i went back to ask if he still had them try and buy them again and he didn't i didn't realize i'd already bought them oh, that's crazy so this is a complete set. It was hard. I had to look. I'm only guesstimating. Most of his stuff was actually missing a lot of parts. I looked a lot of stuff. It's like it's complete. Nothing is complete. Never trust anyone. You have to look. This is an Avid, like black Canty brake set. Um, I've been putting these up for like 40 bucks on eBay and getting it. I mean, they're like 40 bucks a piece new. So it was 10 bucks. And I also found this little baggie. It was some random Campy brake no one cared about of um, recessed brake nuts. So it's a long one, a kind of shorter one, a pretty short one, and a really short one. So I'm like, hey, will you throw this in, do them both for 10? He said, yeah. Said, yes. I love having all the brake nuts in all the sizes. The dude from the Community Cycling uh, Sunday Salvage Sale was there, and I did buy some stuff from him, and he broke 100 for me, so I'd have change for people, so that was great. Um, he had like a really crappy, dirty, really gross and sticky toolbox on the ground. I bought most of my stuff from there. The first thing I did was this handful. So it's like an old vintage look measuring tape. Get a bunch of these. Look cleats brand. It's, I mean, these are really like for seamstresses. They have these little funny measuring tapes. So I don't know what the, the bike one's for, but whatever. He charged me like five bucks for all this stuff. So this little look measuring tape, it's fun. This is what I really wanted. It's a disc brake 
truing tool. You really need two of them to true rotors and stuff on the bike. It is so gross. I need to wash this and degrease her so bad. This is spilled oil. It's 10 years old in the bottom of the bucket or something. But I don't have any of these at all. I barely ever do disc brakes, but you know, for like a buck, I want it. I got another extendo pole magnet. These are great for picking up little parts off the ground or often I want to test and see if something's aluminum or titanium or this was in there and I think he was crazy to have this in there. I don't even know if he knew what it was. This is a Brev Campagnolo tool. I think these are eight millimeters down here and then these are uh, like a five mil up here for working on campy stuff. I barely ever use these. I always want to, but I want them to be a 10. There's some Shimano ones that are kind of like it. They make an eight and a 10. I used to have those in the tool board. But uh, anything that says campy on it, you're going to get 15 bucks for on eBay. So I tripled my money and got all this stuff. A weird part tools, ratcheting wrench in seven millimeter. Totally useless and ridiculous, except some weird old French bikes do have some seven millimeter things. Um, so I'll put it on my board. I'll use it someday. It's cool. So here's my gross stuff. I love these. I have like three or four of these. I also take all the magnets off of used bikes when I get them, like, like the wheel magnets for computers. Stick them on my truing stand so I can grab things and test things. And because a lot of times you get weird light things and you're like, is this weird and light? And you check it and it's like a strong magnetic force of steel. A weak magnetic force is probably stainless. No magnetic force at all. It's probably tire aluminum. And you can usually kind of tell a tie looks like steel but with no magnetic force. Um, and it's very light and aluminum doesn't look like steel. So we got that stuff. Let's check out his big bin. So back to that same guy at the end. He, he tried something this at the beginning. It's a bunch of cables and housing for 30 bucks for this big Ziploc bag, which is probably a decent-ish deal. I asked if it was all new. He said it's mostly new. Um, I ended up talking him down to like 10 bucks on this. Or maybe I said 20 bucks for this and all of his inner tubes. So here's some brand new tubes in the bag, look kind of bigger, 700C probably. Two Rafa tubes in the box for 700 by 20 to 25 tires, totally ridiculous. I don't know, Rafa's bougie, weird hipster nonsense. Um, I think it's fun to score it, you know, for garbage or garage sale prices. So got some sick Rafa tubes. Like brag about them. I'll use them in the background of some photos or something. <laughs> more tubes, more tubes. So I really, he was asking like three for these tubes, which have been a good deal, but I think I ended up getting them for less than a buck each. Two specialized tubes, 700 by 28 with 48 mil valves. These will be great for all the fixed gears and things, all the deep fees. Venstein, follow your sense race tubes. Also 28 with uh, 60 mil valves. This would be really good for deep fees and even deeper rims. Another one of the specialized tubes, a Kenda 700 by 32. So this is all my favorite sizes. These things are all 28s and 32s and all that good stuff. Here's a Schrader valve for uh, 27 one and a quarter basically. That's perfect. A couple of these Rubinas. I used to order the crap out of these Rubinas and you couldn't get anything else. And I kind of actually ended up liking them. So 18 to 25s with a really long valve. So. Weird arrowy rims. I also got a big bag of chain rings that said $10 a piece on them. And I was like, no way, bro, but I came back at the end again. I spent a lot of time at the end. Like, he's all packed up. I'm like, oh, you all done? He's like, oh, I'll put it up for you. Because I'm a jerk. Um, so I went through his $10 chain ring bins, and I think I gave him $10 for all three of these. Maybe some other stuff. This is a brand new Sagino 42 tooth. Is this 130? Yeah, it's 130, 42 tooth, middle ring. You can flip it over and use it as an outer ring. I might use it on the middle. Let's go 42 and then like on like a triple crank and do 32 does not have an outer. Make a real compact double, some old, some old road triple cranks or something fun. It's also brand new and I have a few of the little guys of these that match. So I could do something pretty or I could put it up for sale and see if I can get 20 or 30 bucks for it on eBay because it's new and nice. He also had the matching set of these was 50, 34, 110 BCD. This little uh, 34 is in pretty good shape. The 50 looked mangled though. Like all these inside guys looked pushed. Like maybe it was on a crank and stepped on it or something. So I didn't get that. And I, I like 34. I'm using more stuff. 
And I also got this totally cool 110 five bolt. Usually stuff like this is like a weird four bolt or something, 94. But it is like a race face. It looks like for a single speed outer, 42. Um, and it's all like mm, pretty lightly used. I'd say it's like 80% life left. And it's all machined and 90s and cool. And I got that just to sell. Uh, when I was leaving, there was the guy from um, Either Or. I don't really know that much about him. He's He seemed really nice and cool. He knew who I was. I know I follow him on Instagram just because to see what he's doing. He's making some weird stickers and some fun stuff. And he uses the Shimano 600 tricolor logo. But it says Either Or instead of 600 Altair Group. And it's fun Instagram. He also has another Instagram called Randy Hearse. Making fun of Renee Hearse and how pretentious it is. Instead of pictures of Jan Hein, it's some pictures of Fat Schlub and like Randy Hearst brand and stuff and on less cool bikes. But he gave me a couple cool things, including, I found these at the end, they're like uh, the double Velcro toe straps for like uh, bmx -y or mountain bike style pedals for your fixed gear. And I feel like I always want one of these and I asked him what he wanted. He's like, oh, I just have it, just have it. He's just trying to get rid of stuff. He gave me a bunch of other stuff too. I'll see if I can find it. Um... Oh yeah, a guy next to him had this, he's putting the skewer in, and, oh, can I see that? I'm like, yeah, what do you want for this? This is the Sunlight um, Black Locking Skewer, it takes the 5mm uh, Allen wrench with like a hole drilled into it for the, the safety skewer. Fellow Orange sells these in silver, I love them. Even though they stick out, look like they'd be easy to get wrenches on and pliers. I have used it on all my bikes, I've sold them to all my customers. People are always trying to get them with pliers, like people, customers come in, it looks like someone was trying to get them with pliers and never get them loose. These are a good safety skewer. I love them. Um, and they're pretty. And they just come in some other colors too from a different company. I'm sure they're all made in the exact same factory in Taiwan. But So it's a black rear. It looks brand new. I'm very stoked. I have three or four random mismatched ones of these. So I can piece some together for spoiler alert. My new wheel set, which I'll show you after this. Oh, this is another thing the guy had. Uh, two cassettes. He said they're both takeoffs. One looks like it doesn't have a mile on it. One looks like it might have 10 or 15 miles. He said there have been, been a takeoff of less than 30 miles. So two cassettes. You want 10 each, but I think I talked him into throwing them in with the tubes or something. So I paid like nothing. Um, this is something special to talk about. Oh, there's another tube. Oh, the guy who hosts the swap meet, he's a real cool dude, um, Adam Maxwell SF, and, you know, I've worked on his, his bikes a couple times, I've traded some stuff, I got a, another swap meet last year, I got a rock lobster stem for, like, very little money, that he's gonna put on eBay for medium money, and he got back to me, he's like, my girlfriend has the right lock, rock lobster, I need that stem, will you give it to me or sell it to me, and I was like, I'll trade it to you for weird stuff, and he's like, yeah, totally. And he ended up giving me a good trade. He gave me a bunch of junk he probably didn't care about, like some originate track cranks, some random seat posts, like some stuff I wanted for projects that's not really valuable or cool or desirable stuff. But he gave me a bunch of stuff for that stem. So I was happy. He was happy. He also works at the Ranch Pizza and traded me a, a free pizza and a couple of beers for it. And I was like, yeah, dude. Um, I moved on this two or three times and he still owes me a pizza for throwing that fork. But I walked up to his booth and asked him how he was doing. He said he made like $700, so he was doing great. He had all the right stuff. It's a lot of old track stuff and vintage stuff, but he had this bin of vintage parts for like $10. And I found these and picked them up. Like, are these really in your bin? Are they really $10? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, do they work? He's like, I don't know. I think so. It's been in my bin for 15 years. They are Dura Ace, I believe, eight speed indexing grifters, like the first year grifters. They sure have their clicks and seem to work. They're a little tough. They seem fine. They're a little scuffy, but not much. Like, I'm gonna clean these guys up and I'll probably just sell them because hoods aren't even that sticky yet. They're not worn out. Like, these look pretty good. Pretty good, man. He's like, yeah, you can just have them. I don't care about them. Dude, I feel like these sell for like 70, 80 bucks easy. They say Durace right on them and they haven't been wrecked. Like, whew. I have all this other Dura Ace 8 speed stuff, but I'm probably gonna go plant this flat bar and a thummy. I have the Dura Ace thummy that I put on like a weird, you know, Sturmy Archer <laughs> like thummy mount or something. I think will work. I have to go palm mount or something. I don't know. I also ran into a friend I haven't seen in a long time. I was trying to email and he wouldn't get back to me. 
And he said, he, I'm telling our mutual friends, like, let him know I'm trying to get in touch with him. So I ran to him. He's a super cool dude. Let me find his card. He's a super cool dude. Uh, his name is Mark Guglielmana. And it's this Mark dot Guglielmana. Yeah, you spell that. At gmail.com. And he does amateur frame building stuff. And he's retired. And, you know, he's doing it for fun. He quit his, like, real machining job or whatever. And he makes this cool stuff. Uh, he, he makes a lot of custom decaliers among your stems. So you can really move them around, which is really cool. He's on, and they really got nice. His first couple prototypes are a little rough, but he like figured out a cool method and design and some jigs. And he uh, does 650B mods on bikes. Like he was really into JP Weigel and bought a, a, a modded out JP Weigel and decided he could do it too. So he'd come into Northern at the frame building shop and uh, ask me questions and opinions and tell me cool stuff and sell me stuff. And he'd be doing builds, 650B builds for people. And he didn't have a way of getting stuff at wholesale. So he'd send all his customers to me. So they'd order all our parts for me. Um, so I can make some money on it. Like, uh, he's super cool. He's a dirty old man. Say old dirty man jokes. I sold him my old C Channel Brignelli alignment table. I regret it. And I was asking about that. He he clammed right up. He clearly loves it. Uses it. But I did ask. Uh, I was telling another friend of mine about that. He's like, Oh, Patrick has his that he bought. He talked to him into buying years ago. It's been in storage in my garage for years. He never uses it. I'm trying to track down my friend Patrick. Um, and he's at right now. I'm trying to track him down, ask a mutual friend if he has his number, see if I can buy that I want my alignment table and I could make it a lot easier to realign on space bikes. But he had a couple of racks, he had a couple of things. I didn't really care about anything, but I wanted to buy something from him and he thought I'd want them. He said they're trade-ins when he built custom racks for other customers. So he sold me these two racks for, uh, he wanted 40 for this. I'm like, I don't really care about a Velo Orange rack for 40. Like, you know, I got I got a couple. He's like, how about I give you both of them for 80? And this one's like a fancy Nitto one in good shape. So I said yes, even though I didn't care I want them. I want the goodwill and it doesn't hurt to have some racks in 40s. A piece is a pretty okay deal. I'll end up using them. I can very easily resell them for 40. I might be able to get 80 for this Nitto. It's real nice. Or I'll put them on some projects. Probably on my personal bikes. So that was fun. Oh, this is one of the first guys I saw. I walked up this chick's table. You know, I'm like looking, looking, I don't see anything cool. I see this pile of Campagnolo pump pegs. So the old style pump pegs that clamp around your seat tube and then this big umbrella head for your spring loaded pump to sit in and go down and sit in the crotch of your bottom bracket down tube. I say camping on them, not rusty. They have the hardware. Sometimes these are worth money, sometimes they're not. I think for a while you get 20, 30 bucks for these on eBay. Probably more like 15 now, but I was like, I want one for the um, the Allegro probably. That'd be cool. I'm like, what do, you, what do you want for them? And the guy's like, how many do you want? I'm like, well, really just one, but depending on the price, all of them. And he's like, for you, I would do $3 for one or $10 for all of them. So as you see, I ended up with all of them. One, two, three, four, five. So I might save one or two for myself and put the other three or four up on uh, up on old eBay. They're like mint condition. They're clearly only old stock. Oh yeah, I also got this little old Dura Ace tool. It doesn't say Dura Ace on it though. So maybe it's the Dior or XT version. One side's chain ring bolts, and I think the other side's dust caps. And there's a little wrenchy on it. But um, people ask insane money for old chain bolt tools on eBay and get it. I don't sell them very often unless I say campy on them or, you know, Durace right on it. Because I like having these around. You never find when you need one. I have one in my bike cleaning parts. I have when I want to take cranks apart when I'm cleaning them. I have them, like, on the tool bench, you know. I, I need them all the time. I love these little chain bolt tools. And not having one is really frustrating and stupid. This is funny. So this guy had these Chris King socks and some old Defeat socks and stuff. Some look new, some look used. Had them in the dollar bin. I went outside and I was hanging out with uh, BMX Gary. He came and it started raining really hard and it was cold. And I'm like, you know what? I'm wearing like Birkenstocks and no hat, no jacket. So I went inside and I was looking and the guy didn't have any change. So I ended up buying five. So I had several pairs of socks, including some skull ones to put on at the show, and this Chris King hat escaped right off my glasses, this dorky white, kind of dirty Chris King hat. So I got some, some more wool socks, which I love wool socks, I don't mind them used at all, and a Chris King hat for five bucks. 
Also, the Cars Are Coffin guy who makes cool stickers and shirts and used to be really popular years ago. He moved to Portland a while ago and he had some stuff. In the last couple swap meets, he gave me some real deals. He also took a real deal from me and I was like, oh, but he gave me so many good deals, I gotta give it to him. But he um, had these cranks on Craigslist a few months ago and I wanted to buy them. And I was too lazy to get them and I finally was ready to go get them and he had to go to town. He said, hit me back up and that was months ago. And Blah, blah, blah. But he posted all the swap beat stuff and the cranks were there. So I'm like, dude, I'm going to go buy those if you have them. So I did. He wanted, he did not give me a deal. He wanted 50 bucks for them and he got his $50 for them. Um, they are pretty good. There's barely some heel rub. You can see in the light, barely through the anno. These are Dura Ace 7410 cranks, which are really rare. I've never seen them before. So they're a little newer looking than the regular 7400 cranks. They almost look like the next generation, which is like the 7700 crank. But the 7700 cranks, I love everything 7700 from Durace, except for their cranks or stupid octoling stuff. I do not mess with that stuff. It's junk. You can't look at it and tell if it's bad. You have to put it on a bike and have it fall off. You can't get the bottom brackets. It's like a whole thing. So I thought these would be cool because they look a little bit more modern and they, I feel like they, these match the 70. 700 nine speed group way better than they match the um, 7400 road group, which is very 80s and square. So these are square taper. They look really good. He said he's hoarding them for some other projects and just keeps not getting around to it. They've got a more modern outer chain ring. It's a 50 tooth outer, nice Shimano chain ring bolts, and the inner is a little 39 Durace silvery ring with some wear but I will probably use this with just the 39 or get a 38 aftermarket ring and uh, build a bike around this because I have the long cage 9 speed 7700 rear derailleur with the big mega range pulleys. It's like the one year only long cage big pulley derailleur. I use it on my rando bike. I put them on lots of bikes because they really wrap a lot of chain. You don't get chain suck or slap. They're nice. You can use a real big cassette with a wolf tooth. I think I'm using an 1136 on my rando bike with this Dura Ace rear derailleur, and uh, it shifts awesome. And I think it'd even handle a bigger cassette if I wanted. And I got another one of those 1136s. It's like a, a really expensive high end SRAM one, the 10 something or other. It's all light and big alloy spider. So I have a good new. I got it at um, the salvage sale a while ago. Someone threw it into the bin of cassettes as parts. So there's one little baggie with the small rings and the big thing and another chunk all separate. And I'm like, wait, this matches, this matches. It, it was all matching, and all complete. And never on a bike. It's like, holy crap. It's like, you know, a hundred dollar cassette at wholesale. It's like crazy. So I have the cassette, I have a rear derailleur. I have, um, I've got two rear 7700 hubs recently. One for 30 bucks off uh, Craigslist from a guy who was way overcharging from the else he had, but for this thing it was cheap and it's mint. And then one of my friend Anthony donated me an old tubular race wheel, and I just cut the, the rim off. So I have the group, I just need a nice frame, and I've already got the front wheel. But that's the next story too. Okay, so I've got these cool cranks. He also insisted I buy this bar, and I couldn't say no. It's an old Specialized by Nitto, it's a little scuffy, it's a mountain bike bar. It's 26.0, 26.0 flat bars are hard to find, I keep getting gorgeous stems are 26.0. It's not particularly wide, it's a little small, but you know, good for a little city bike or maybe a fixie or a vintage mountain bike or maybe I'll sell it on eBay, I don't know, it's old and weird. I think it was like a one year only Cannondale thing or something. It might be worth some dough to somebody. You won 10 bucks for it, I bought it. It says specialized right on it. 26.0. So those are the only two things. Usually I get a lot of weird little stuff from him. Like I said, BMX Gary was there and that was very exciting because he's a fun dude to hang out with. He just talks a little bit of trash, but not too much. And he finally just set up and starts selling. He's like, hey, there's just an empty table out here in the middle of swap meeting. I just set up and start selling. I'm like, yeah, they'll come by. They'll ask for 10 bucks maybe. And he gave me praise. He's like, what do you want? What size? He had the new shirts. I was like, do you two extra large? Like, you want a yellow one? I'm like, I want the yellow one, but I'm going to stain it and stop wearing it. I should really get a black. He's like, can you just have one of both? Didn't charge me. He's so nice. So I got some 2XL MTV style BMX bike museum shirts. So I'll be wearing these in a lot of my videos because these are, this bright yellow is hot. 
Got the black one. Boom, hot. Very excited. Gave me some stickers. I'm like, dude, you gotta give me all those new logo stickers. I think his friend who does most of his logos and artwork, he showed up, uh, Greg, um, and he did a bunch of stickers for us and others. Our, our Operation Ivy logo sticker, he did like a couple of beer stickers. Let's see if we can find pictures of them, put them up. I probably still have some. Got BMX Bike Museum stickers, BMX Bike Museum stickers. And he brought me two of his calendars. If anyone wants a BMX Bike Museum calendar, I probably only need one. Look at this Nintendo cover. Cool pictures of vintage BMXs in here. All calendarific. So cool. So cool. Um, oh, this is uh, the CCC guy I got the tools from. This is his wife has started tattooing again up here. A little flyer for her tattoo business if you're in old Vancouver, Washington, or Portland, Oregon. So that's cool. Oh, these are more stickers. These are more stickers from the uh, from the either or guy. So here's his either or logo, which is um, our Shimano tricolor. Very cool. He also had a bunch of these Randy Hearst stickers. He gave me a bunch. I went and gave Brian some at Stoic Wheels and gave a few people. It was so funny. He also had these really cool uh, little fake Columbus stickers. They're super cool. It say uh, PDX Oregon on them. He also had these, I grabbed one of each, Surly logoed Huffy stickers. Because <laughs> Surly's kind of our just big cheap Huffies, but they're way nicer. But Surly logo Huffy stickers, I grabbed those. And he had these cool, it's not really a postcard, but it's kind of like a postcard. Um, either or bikes, St. Calvin. So if you know Calvin, he's from uh, Park Tools. And he did a whole bunch of YouTube videos on how to use their tools and how to do service with their tools. Every Tuesday he would drop a new video and apparently he died. No one knows it. Cool either or postcard. I'm going to hang this up. It's, this is dope stuff. So I think this is all my swap meet sales. I think I only spent around 240 or 50 bucks. I'm not really sure. I broke the 100. I haven't really checked my change. but A lot of people try to give me a lot of other stuff for free. Um, there's a bunch of other stuff I could have bought. I'm sure I missed a ton of good stuff. Big old pile. So then, after the swap meet and eating pizza and drinking a beer with BMX uh, Gary and just hanging out, and another one of the guys comes to uh, Sunny Salvage Shells, he hung out with us for a while at Gary's table, and uh, it was cool talking some shit and seeing a bunch of cool people, and not, I didn't see some people I really expected to see. I was there the whole time, I was there. 11.03 to probably 4, 4 p.m. <laughs> Drinking beer and digging through everyone's uh, pile of bike parts three, four times. Then I went over to Stoic Wheels. My friend Brian's shop, Stoic Wheels, he moved into Black Star Bags, which is like a... been making bike bags for years. But he has to like, start a construction company and actually makes money with that, makes no money on the bags. So he's like, never there, and it's closed, and never really designed anything new, and years and years and years. And, Brian's been trying to talk him into making backpack and stuff, but he won't, or bike pack and stuff. So Brian built me these wheels. Here is the back. So this is a 8-speed uh, Dura-Ace, like 7410 hub that I got um, at uh, another bike hoarder's, you know, uh, garage sale, kind of like their own private swap meet. And I believe that these are some scratch and dent uh, velocity rims. I think the only thing wrong with this one is it's missing the sticker. I think they sell the stickers for two bucks. I'm going to have to go look and see if I can get one. This is the Velocity Atlas. I like this rim. It's a heavy touring rim. It is kind of big and heavy, especially with modern carbon rims and ultralight things. It's real wide. You can do like 650B 48s on these, no problem. They're 650B. They come high polish. They're wide. They're heavy duty. I'm heavy. He did some really nice butted Supreme race spokes. God, the butt is all the way up there at the threads, that's wild. Really light Supreme Race, and I had him do red alloy nipples, super fun. Just a little touch of red. And I don't know if I've showed it in any of my other videos, I have a Dura Ace stem. I bought a whole parts bike for the stem. I have three Dura Ace posts now, so I'll have one for any size I need. Um, I have the Dura Ace single right shifter I'm doing one by. I got Dura Ace cranks, 
I think I bought it at the same time I bought this hub from that garage sale. And I put uh, a red anodized little 38 tooth, I should get it out and put a picture on here, 38 tooth aftermarket modern kind of ring. I got a red alloy like wolf tooth clone like derailleur hanger thing. I got some red alloy pulleys for the rear derailleur. Uh, I got some grips with a little red lock on stuff so I'm going to kind of tark this bike out. I also have a fake Louis Vuitton purse I'm modifying into a little handlebar bag. <laughs> Maybe a seat back. <laughs> just to be bougie and annoying and ridiculous. So I gotta see if I can get some stickers for this. This is the front. So it's the same rim, same thing. It's just 650B Atlas. Same spoke, same nipples, also missing the sticker. A lot of times Velocity Scratch and Dent stuff really has the most minor little flaw you've ever seen. A little ding or scratch or just missing a sticker. The sticker's half de laminated. They're just like too lazy to pull that sticker off and put a new one on. And this has, uh, Brian picked, ended up going with the Kaize hub because it was the only way to find like a 32 hole hub in, in silver with non-disc at the time. And also apparently the Kaize hubs are getting more popular because they're making them field serviceable now. So you pop the axles off and press new bearings in. Most of the other hubs you can't. Um, they have to go back to the factory and really be pulled apart. It's like a whole thing. A lot of people won't even service them. They'll send you a new one until you to build a new wheel. I got black end caps, which I don't like, but the this, the rear hub does too, and I'm gonna have some black accents and some red accents. So Kaize Dynamo hub, so whenever you're riding your bike, this is like a generator in a car. It's got magnets and stainless steel and copper coils inside, so it's a little heavy. It's a little resistancy, but it uh, generates power. So it'll run power from these wires up to the dynamo lights. And I have a couple of front dynamo lights I bought cheap off eBay, where Chinese things would probably be fine for a city bike, and a couple of rear random dynamo lights I grab, which I'll figure out a cool mount for. And the plan for all this stuff is to go on this Georgiana Terry I bought. It's like mid 80s, it was pre-tricolor uh, Shimano 600 bike. I sold the 600 parts for more than I paid for the whole bike. I bought it from the original owner, original owner's mom, then she passed it down, and then she had a bunch of kids and stopped riding bikes, you know, had it sitting in her way for five years before she finally sold it to me. Um, it's hot, it's, Georgiana Terry um, paid other factories to make her bikes for her, so it's actually a Serata, which is like the 80s hot racing bike. They made the Team 7-Eleven bikes, built a bunch of race bikes, so it's Serata built with Japanese tubing, dropouts with eyelets, and like a Tongate fork. So it's a pretty hot race bike. I think it'll fit 650B 38s. I got some 650B 38s from uh, Tomcat a while ago for like 40 bucks for the pair because he couldn't get them to set up tubeless on a customer's bike. And then the Pacente, really light ones that don't last very long, but I'm, I'm making a fenderless summer dynamo bike so I can go ride my bike and stay out too late in the summer. And, and maybe all these parts will go into a different frame someday or make a handmade frame or whatever. So this is my hot new wheel set. And then I gotta show off all the parts for this stuff because I've been talking about them. All right, I gotta show you the stuff I got for this bike. So this is like a weird eBay $28 Chinese silver headlight, dynamo light. It's got a button, it's got the stand light, it's got all the modern features, so it's probably fine. Here's a weird fender mount rear light I got, the salvage sales. I think this is the big ugly rear rack light that came with the headlight. I got a couple other little ones somewhere that are in this pile. This is my weird modded out um, yeah, like micro shift shifter thing with some random other shifter parts and plates that I think I can get this 8-speed Dura shifter shifting and working. It's a oh, weird guts so and I had to do some weird stuff. But I think it's real tight too. A little scruffy 8-speed Dura Ace onto a thummy pod. Pretty exciting. The 8-speed Dura Ace headset, which will probably work, hopefully. Very exciting. I bought this bike, I bought some crappy old Cannondale. It's got this stem, seat post, headset. So these Durace, this is a 26.4, I believe, stem, which sucks butt. Or maybe this is a 26. Okay, 26 by 22. So maybe I can use this weird ugly bar, even though it's not really the bar I want to use. Um, or I might use these shims and put a 25.4 bar in. I got. A Simworks, like little riser bar, the last swap me, but it was so heavy, dude. I can't, I can't, I just can't. It's too heavy. Uh, and I really want a cruiser bar, or a cooler riser bar, or something of energy, but cool. So we'll see. I haven't found the right thing. But this is like the secret. 
the little secret stem, it's a 110. This would be perfect for a riser bar, more likely a, a slightly cruiser bar. Um, here are the seat posts I have, I think. This is the one that came on the on the Candale, I think. I don't know, the Candale should be 27 too. But this is a 26.8 with flutes, says Durace. I think this is the one I just got at the salvage sales attached to an old turbo. It's a little scruffy, but it's more correct. It's 27.2. I think this frame's 26.8. So I don't know. Here's the third one I have. Oh, it's also 27.2. I mean, it's a little less scruffy. So I got two 27.2s. The Aeroness and the 1268. Got one red alloy specialized bottle cage. I'm not super stoked on, but whatevs. Here are the slightly scruffy. I had a nicer set and I sold them because I'm an idiot. Got more money. So these are 7402s. I believe these are 1725s, so I kept them. And this is uh, the aftermarket 38 tooth, little red alloy. Kind of narrow, wide looking ring. I don't think it's an actual narrow wide. I think this looks more modern. From a one bias. It's pre pretty hot. A cheap Chinese grips and bar end plugs. So, little red locks on these black grips. Little red bar end plugs. Getting just a little bit tarky, tacky, and cheesy. Here's a pretty mint, it's actually so mint the derailers, the, the pulleys are almost too nice. Um, 7402 8 speed derace, rear derailleur. Um, I put these 11 tooth, which is two big alloy pulleys. Velo Orange has the 10 speed version back. I'm not sure these will work or cause me problems. I'll probably go ahead and buy the 10 speed or the 10 tooth versions because these are 11 tooth um just in case or maybe swap them out they basically look exactly the same they're red and they have little drilled holes this is pretty hot what's the other thing oh and this is the little red anodized wolf tooth road link so this will drop this trailer down so i can get a much bigger cassette we're playing with the we're playing with my roommate's rb2 that i sold her trying to use a short cage with one of these drink uh tanglers and didn't really wrap enough chain it was um didn't, they couldn't have enough chain tension, so her chain was falling off all the time. So I might end up using this red alloy ring on the inside and a bash guard on the outside to keep the chain from falling off. And if I did that, I could get red alloy chain ring bolts, which I thought would be too much with them on the ring, so I used these, these aluminum silver ones. Or I could use black ones, that'd be cool too. Use road double. So I might end up doing that. I might go on the inside. We will see, but now I basically have everything I need to build this bike. I have several cruiser bars I like. Um, so, <laughs> sorry Paramount people, I really might end up uh, doing this one first for me. And I'm, if I did this, I thought that nothing special showed up for sale. I also have a Velo Orange Portour rack that I paid like dollars for on Craigslist. People are always trying to get 80 to 120 for them. And this guy had it for 80 forever and finally dropped the price to like 40 and I, and I was like I gotta go get that. I think he dropped the price again to like 25. I'm like I'm coming over right now. It might go on this because it's hot. And the uh, last thing to show you is the first thing I got this week which is this Mercy N. So let's check it out. So this is the bike I bought. This is a, a ridiculously rusty 72 or 74 Mercian old race frame. I think it's Reynolds 531. I think it's got their pencil stays. It's like so skinny down here. It's got campy dropouts. It's got crusty, kind of rusty Nova Record um, clamp on shifters, the early style. It's got the little blue booties. It's got Novo early front derailleur, rear derailleur, Nova Record. Nova Record brakes with the right pad holders and barrel adjusters. It's got 1725 Nova Record cranks, decent rings. Tom said he thought the rings were worn out. But what I saw and what I bought them for is these Novo Tipo hubs. So they're the lesser hub, they're like 
less hardened races and less good cones. But they're high flange, they have a really symmetrical drilling, they're very pretty. I see these wheels are saveable, they're like, you know, crappy old single wall Weemans. Probably from the 60s. So I don't think the wheels original, it should have been Novo Record probably. Probably would have been 700C as well. Um, so these are 27 inch, Tipo, big freewheel, which handles this, no record trailer handles great, which is cool. And I bought this because I want it for the Allegro. I want the hubs, I'm hoping they're saveable. So I saw it and I was asking, I didn't think he'd sell it. He's like, oh yeah, I'll sell it. I was like, oh, what do you want for it? He's like, make me an offer. And I'm like, uh, I was thinking hundred bucks. I'm like, what do you want? And he's like, hundred bucks, get it out of here. It's yours. It's my size, but I'm going to spend money repainting it, polishing it, buying all this campy record stuff and then never riding it. The guy who tried to sell it to him put brand new 27 one quarter gator skins on, brand new bar tape, brand new hoods, Cane Creek. Um, so it's got a hundred dollars of the tires on it. And I do a lot of 27 inch stuff, so I was like, yeah, man. So I gave him a hundred bucks for this bike. 172.5 cranks, correct dust bolts, correct caps, correct bottom bracket. Doesn't feel dead. Very low input, that hub is spinning real smooth. I'm probably gonna get some Velo Orange 650B rims for it. Brian's in the ground shop, see if he has any old scratch and dent ones. Those are orders some new ones. I might build them myself, but that's crazy. I should just pay Brian to do it. He charges me wholesale on labor, which is crazy. Um, he really undercharged me for those dirt race wheels. Like, and I told him that, and he did the math in his head, which definitely sounded wrong to me. He was like, no, it's fine. He charged me 260, bro. Like, those rims are $100 a piece. The spokes, um, two bucks a piece at, you know, 32 times two. Um, the front hub's $110 wholesale. Like, so he gave me wholesale on the front hub. He gave me wholesale. I think the rims are scratch and dent. So we got them really cheap on clearance. They're probably 20 or 30 bucks scratch and dent. Clearance literally six or seven years ago. I used to make them buy all back and the only one uses it. So I really have been holding on those rims for me for years. And wholesale those folks and wholesale those labor or didn't charge me labor. He didn't do something. It was 260 for essentially that back hub's a hundred bucks, the front's 150, the rims are, you know, 95 a piece, plus polishing through this charge an extra 20 bucks a piece. I mean, really, that's like an $800 wheel set. <laughs> like, <laughs> so that's exciting. I was really worried about how much it was gonna be, and it took like 500 bucks with me, and I'm like, oh, man, that's on my card. And he's like, 260, bro, and I was like, that can't be right. He's like, man, yeah, 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 that's right, it's right. Brian's cool. I mean, I did talk him into starting this business and I did give him his first spot to do it. Have bought lots of wheels and traded him lots of tools and given him lots of things and helped him on lots of projects. Brian's cool. I'd do anything for him. He still does nice stuff for me. Oh yeah. This thing has long point thin lugs, no record headset, a little sh kind of shorty Chinelli old logo barn stem. That stuff's worth dough. 27.2 record seat post, even though it's a little rusty and crusty. Everything's a little rusty and crusty. Beautiful wraparound seat stay treatment. Nice old lugs. 100 bucks. I, I, I could have done better. It's not the original fork. He gave me a, the original fork. It got hit on the side and the moving accent is bent. So I have the original fork. It is a Mercy N fork from the right year. I think I'm going to check the dropouts to make sure they say can't be on them. But the guy had it repainted and you can see the paint did not stick. It looks like dog shit. Um, I think the bike's nice other than that, I'm pull it apart and look. I mean, maybe I'll sell it to somebody who'll be into it and you know, give it a repaint and build it up nice or make it into a fixie, <laughs> write it as is. This is pre brazons there's no brazons on this bike at all. Um, campy dropouts are great for fixies. Like, the rear's probably spaced 120. Like, you slap some junk on and party. Maybe I'll do that. I mean, this will be my white fixie. <laughs> but that is my weekend scores. It's Sunday, there's no salvage sale today because of the swap meet for reasons. So I'll have to wait for next week to see if I can score any more things, which is good because I have five overflowing boxes full of things I need to look at and inspect and clean and put on eBay or put into my stash. But that is my video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for checking my cool scores. I'll do my next video in my stylish uh, BMX Museum shirt.